Yo, what is going on you guys? Bastion YJ here and today I'm going to be coming at you with my undefeated locals Tenpai Dragon Deck Profile, Tenpai Sky Striker Dragon Deck Profile for you guys for the July 2024 current format guys now as of the time of recording this video there's no current updated ban list as of yet most recently is going to be the one you're using from april so if the event for some reason one happens to drop at around this time then you guys already know but as far as this goes tempai dragon i've been trying to play it more frequently uh, for the past few weeks uh, so i went ahead and tried a the sky striker deck profile for a sky striker version of the tempai dragon strategy just because i wanted to go ahead and see how it would overall work and it worked extremely well the overall decks center Energize extremely well because realistically guys you are not going to be needing a whole bunch of hand traps especially with cross out designator being in a lot of people's main decks side decks definitely all over the format ash blossom imperm valor mourner the most popular hand traps are most likely going to cross out designator so i want to go ahead and find a way to uh play the deck in a way that would still be able to push through hand traps uh and uh, not worry essentially in the event my hand traps would get a cross out designator or called by it because that way i can pretty much just go on about my day uh, so let's go ahead and get into the profile guys and i'll go over my thoughts as i get through it i have three tempai dragon pydra three chandra and two of the Phadra. uh pretty self-explanatory not really much else to go into there uh for you know pydra searches you the spell trap uh chandra special summons itself and it's your tuner uh and then Phadra special summons from the grave and it's quick effect secret they're all quick effect synchro right uh so it's pretty much pretty standard for that uh for the sengen spells Four of the field spell, three of the Sangin Kaiman. Uh, again, pretty self explanatory. You want to make sure you're able to maximize, of course, for your consistency. Um, and then three copies of Power Prosperity, of course. Again, you really just want to make sure you're able to see <clears throat> the right board breaker in this, ascent, in this instance, or if not, your best starter. Uh, so I do play one copy of Thrust, one copy of Talents. I am considering bumping this up to two Thrust and no Talents, potentially, but Talents does come up pretty nicely sometimes. I take my opponent's monster, uh, not necessarily to draw because it can't conflict with Prosperity, but I look at my opponent's hand just to make sure they don't have any weird interactions like an Ash and a Kaiman or a Ghost Ogre on a Field Spell, which would really hurt. So that's also really nice to have. And again, for the Board Breakers, we just play three Regeki, three Dark Hole, Three Dark, uh, not not Ruler, <laughs> two Lightning Storm, and one Harpy's Feather Duster for our Board Breakers, guys. Uh, and then, of course, three Forbidden Droplet. Uh, these are going to be all of our Board Breakers that we have. Realistically, if we see one of these, we are already in a really good position to go ahead and win that game. Um, just because you're, they're all going to be blowout cards, right? Um, especially Regeki Dark Hole, you're being able to destroy the entire board. Especially against a deck like Snake Guy, if you're able to go ahead and Dark Hole them twice, or at least blow up the back row and then destroy the monsters, it is really puts a damper on their recursion and what they can overall be left with and build, right? So without any type of really spell traps negations in the current format, except for maybe uh, Titanic Galaxy, uh, that's where the Sky Striker engine really comes into play. Because realistically, before then, it was just for Bin Droplet or Imperm that would be your negators. But now you do play uh, the Sky Striker package, which again, lets you have access to a lot more board breaker options. Uh, so you do play three copies of Mobilize Engage, two copies of Widow Anchor, one Shark Cannon, one Hornet Drones, one Afterburn, and one Multi Roll. So, uh, theory behind all these guys is that essentially engage uh, after you're activating two or three spells. It's really just a great way to keep keep digging through your deck for additional board breakers or an additional starter. There's been games where I have absolutely no starter in my hand, just a whole bunch of board breakers. So I break through my opponent's entire board, go engage, search Hornet Drones, and then get the draw. And then of course Hornet Drones, uh, summon Kagari, engage again, activate, engage. Uh, to be able to draw that one additional card, and that one additional card can be either another Frank Great Board Breaker, Forbidden Droplet, Save You for the Next Turn, or Terraforming, Sangin, uh, Sangin Summoning, Sangin Kaiman. It really just, that additional draw goes really, really far in this deck. There's the duel last uh, last tournament where I activated this card three times uh, in one uh, in one turn. So it just, you only know, have so much more recursion, so much more resource gain with this. It's just really, really good, especially because you're really, the Tempai Dragon, you're gonna be going second. You're pretty much just trying to work with whatever six cards you were dealt and if you don't have otk in those six cards it really puts you in a bind where you have to then grind so the sky striker mobilized engage really helps out with that of course being able to add additional cards onto your hand and that's why i really want to consider playing thrust at two just being able to search out the engage and have again that additional spell in the grave it's going to be really really good uh widow anchor to negate any type of nonsense your opponent might have whether it's appaloosa whether 
whether it's the number 38 uh, or whatever it might be, guys. So it's really, really good for that. Shark Cannon, of course, is anything in the graveyard, which comes up a lot. And then one Hornet Drums, of course, just to make the Kagari to add back the engage, uh, reactivate the engage, or to add back the afterburners. This also takes care of any type of floodgates you might have to deal with. So really, really good as well. And then multi roll, I do like it in here because it makes it so that once you get to a certain point with your Sky Strike or stuff, you activate a multi roll, send another card, and your opponent can't activate your spell uh, to your spell effect. So it would like Sangin Kaiman, Sangin Summoning effect. Uh, your opponent just can't respond to your spells, which is really, really good, especially when trying to push for a game and you feel like they may have an Ash Blossom, right? Uh, so that's gonna be it for the main deck, guys. At least a 41 card main deck. Uh, for the extra deck, we'll play one copy of Sky Striker Ace Kagari, uh, one Striker Dragon, one SP Little Knight, one uh, Heretic Seal, one Hida, and one copy of the uh, Sky Crisis for our non-synchro monsters. Uh, I think about the most part, it's pretty standard. I do play the Hida in the event they get rid of my, uh, I don't have an SP Dragon anymore, or I just need to, a way to get, go ahead and climb to a Little Knight, but really it's not really a card that comes up at all, if that. So and that's what I like about this deck is that it has a lot of room to play. So. This is by no near a perfect deck by any means. There's a lot of things I want to change, a lot of things I want to improve on, uh, especially after the new support comes out in Infinite Forbidden. This deck, I don't know if it's going to be the uh, near uh, close to being one of the better ways to play Tenpai Dragon. I don't know if it's going to be more better to play uh, three Gen Roku, two Gen Roku, one Gen Roku. How many of the Dora Draco we want to play? How many traps we want to play main deck? So the deck changes a lot after Infinite Forbidden. Uh, I think definitely for especially uh, North American Nats. Um, so there's a lot to definitely build on, but at least we can talk about it, right? Uh, for the Synchros 2, Bite it, 1, Transcend it. I do want to bump it up to Transcend it because I am scared of Cashier Unicorn uh, ripping this because that would absolutely suck. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you have other level 10 options to go into, but hitting this would, is it's unfortunate. Uh, one Samurai Destroyer, uh, just because the uh, Bell is really, really big in the format right now, so Samurai Destroyer obviously counters that. Uh, when Don Dragster, I've seen this play a lot more in the OCG for going first plays. I have yet to summon it, but I mean, I see where it could maybe be useful so maybe something I keep in here maybe not I have considering playing super polymerization in the side deck or maybe even main that because it is still a great board breaker as well just play like Garura Mud Dragon and the Earth Attic Nister uh, in here so that may be something that we do move forward uh, of course one Black Rose and one Meteor Burst Dragon uh, for the other synchros and then for our level 10s we play one ruddy rose dragon and one trident dragon um, I've been told quite a few times no one sees this card coming because uh, I think a lot of people just cut it from their extra deck But I think ruddy rose dragon is a phenomenal card There's a few times where you may not be able to exactly OTK with this deck and that's perfectly fine especially if you're activating prosperity um, And things like that so you really want to be able to go ahead and summon ruddy rose dragon as a way to just banish everything from the graveyard and just reset the graveyard to zero because you're banishing especially if you're going up against snake guy you're banishing their oak you're banishing uh promethean princess you're banishing a lot of stuff they would naturally want to keep in their extra deck. you're banishing at least one flamber dragon so you're already getting rid of a lot of their resources maybe one to two poplar so really really good card right off the bat guys and again try and drag out just a really good card uh, just to push for a game otk uh but it's not a card that i make very very often so if you got some more budget play it's not a card you necessarily need in order to play this deck, but it's, it is a card that comes up every now and then. Uh, for the uh, side deck, this is the side deck that I am going to be changing up quite a bit, but just so you guys know, so uh, for, for this profile, uh, three shifter, of course, the god card, it, when you draw it, you pretty much just win from there because your opponent, realistically, if you're adding it to your deck, it means if they get shifter, they really can't do much, so then you're good to go. Uh, two Fenrir, I'm not sure if I'm going to be keeping this in the side deck, but it's good for now. Uh, two Talents, uh, three Cross Out because I wanted to go ahead and hit the D barrier. Uh, triple Cosmic for Skill Drain and one Rivalry. Uh, rivalry may... <clears throat> I, I think may big maybe going into the main deck, but it's something I still want to consider because especially going for uh, larger tournaments as well, which I'm trying to prepare for. So rivalry is not something I believe is going to be very good in the main deck. It's because I believe a lot of people are going to be playing Tenpai Dragon to begin with, so uh, having this in the main may not be the best option. So you really got to prepare for the mirror match. Uh, maybe cross out Designator uh, with a D barrier, maybe a Skill Drain in here as well. Just make sure that we have that option for ourselves. Because Skill Drain really, really is a big, big counter to this deck, and every. 
every single deck out there is currently playing it that can get rid of it easily. So uh, because it absolutely just demolishes his deck, right? So you unless you have Harpy's Feather Duster, Lightning Storm, Cosmic Cyclone, uh, one of these cards. Which don't get me wrong, I already listed like, quite a few cards that you can have. So pretty six cards, uh, six unsearchable cards compared to their three unsearchable cards is really how you want to look at it. So mathematically, you should have an advantage. But again, bumping that up a little bit higher is never a bad idea, right? So that's gonna be it for the deck profile, guys. Uh, it's still a deck that I want to continue working on as far as uh, perfecting my personal build. And again, that's something I really like because really with Tempai, yes, you primarily do want to go second for the most part. Your strategy is going to be pretty same and linear, but there's so many different ways to go ahead and play this deck. I don't think there's one correct way. You can go the hand trap route, the board breaker, the sky striker routes. I've seen some runic variants, whatever. <laughs> as much of a meme as that was, it's something that you can definitely at least look into. But uh, that's going to be it for the profile, guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you guys are going to be going to Nats, let me know in the comments, or if you guys want to go ahead and come say hi, make sure you guys go ahead and do so. Also, if you guys are missing any cards for Nats, make sure you guys please use the whatnot link in the description so you guys get 15 free bucks towards any product that you guys want uh, for uh, Yu Gi Oh! Whatever you want, collectibles, whatever it might be. But Nats is coming up in three weeks, guys. So we're gonna make sure that we are prepared, we're gonna make sure we get the cardboard that we need, the shiny cardboard or not. And getting 15 bucks for free is definitely gonna go a long way, guys. So make sure you guys check the link in the description. But that's for ado, hope you guys did enjoy, and I'll see y'all in the next one.